Now this short guide shows you how to enter content to your portfolio as an experience and experience is the term used to mean the text-based reflections and evidence that we record that documents our learning and our understanding and our planning for learning. So whatever pieces of evidence you're putting in as text to your portfolio, that's done in the experiences area. So once again, we can um, access the ePortfolio either from your student gateway or from the front page of any of, of the Blackboard site and through to ePortfolio. So there's an ePortfolio link always on the front page of Blackboard and that will take you through once again to the menu page. And we're going to be working in the build and release your portfolio area. You may already have looked at the short video guide on uploading files. That was this section here. And now most of the work that you do in your portfolio is in the build and release your portfolio section. When you click into the Build and Release Your Portfolio section, you'll notice that there are four tabs, and this refers to this covers all of the different content that you will put into your portfolio. So there's the content which is added as an experience, content which is added as an artifact, which is a standalone um, item. So when you go into artifacts, you'll notice the difference there from experiences is experiences is always related to a particular skill or competency and we'll have a bit more of a look at these in a minute. Artifacts are simply listed, they're standalone items that you create and they're not particularly directly linked to a competency or employability skill. Then there's the Portfolio Views tab. This is the space where you come to create a new view and to add items to that view. So the view, remembering that that is referring to a set of items. So a version, if you like, of your portfolio. And then once you've created that particular version and that set of evidence, then you're most likely putting that together because you're wanting to release it to an audience to have a look at and that's covered in the last tab there. So this video guide is about experiences. You'll notice here that there are a lot of sets for different uh, discipline professional skills. Now you won't see all of these. You will see the specific professional skills, competencies and standard sets that are relevant to your course enrolment. So for example, if you're a nurse, you're undertaking nursing studies, you will see nursing competencies. Nurse practitioner standards likewise, teaching, social work. There are a number of professions that have um, specified discipline specific competencies that graduates are required to be able to evidence. Now, all students have access to portfolio capabilities and that is relating to this set of folders which are the graduate employability skills. So these have been identified um, in collaboration with the Australian Business Council with graduate recruitment services and so forth and these are the types of skills that employers are looking for in employees regardless of their discipline specific skills and abilities. So we'll use this set for the demonstration here as all students have access to them. Because they're generic skills, they're, well, they're known as generic employability skills, they're available to all students. We'll see this in their portfolio and these particular skills offer a subset of folders to acknowledge that they may be skills that you're learning here within your academic work, they may be skills from the workplace, from community work that you do, or in your personal lives. Now these folder sets, there's no right or wrong to which one you choose to put your content into. The heading serves to focus your reflection on the particular skill that you're wanting to evidence. You can choose the setting that is relevant and then the heading, the communication academic heading in this instance, 
This also appears, as you will have seen from the sample portfolios, as a heading in your ePortfolio view so that when your reader is having a look at your portfolio in the online space, they will see this folder name as a heading and that guides your reader to read the evidence that you've written. So any experiences that you already have in this folder will show up in the menu box and to enter new content it is just a matter of clicking new, of giving your experience a title. So I'm giving it a title, something that's meaningful to you so that when you come back to choose it, to use as evidence for perhaps a job application or a promotion or some other purpose, you'll be able to recognise the piece of evidence that you want to use. So make sure you give everything a meaningful title. These other sections you can use if they're useful to you, you don't have to. And then your reflective piece, your piece of evidence, the information that you want to convey about your professional practice goes in this description area. So you can work into this space or you can paste across from another um, space that you work in. It really doesn't matter. It's OK either way. So you enter your text into here. It'll take eight to nine hundred words. So they can be long or short. Remembering, of course, that you'll often be drawing on the experience that you develop here to speak about in job interviews and interviews for um, other purposes as well. Um, so it's a good idea to have plenty of detail here to remind yourself of what you might want to talk about. But then if you're developing experiences which you do intend to share with a prospective employer or other audience in the online space, it's a good idea to keep them quite succinct if you can so that you're not um, making the person's reading time too long. But it'll take about eight to nine hundred words there. And then you can come in, if it's relevant, you can come in and you can attach a file. So I'm writing here about my technology lesson that I've given to a year five. I might have um, a piece of feedback from my supervising teacher or supervisor in the workplace. Um, or I might have the actual lesson details or some samples of the student work that I want to attach to this reflection. And you can do that simply by clicking on select. It takes you back to the file manager area where we were before. It lists all your files. You can choose the one that you would like to attach and select. It will um, show you the file name. You can attach more than one file. You can have multiple files if you like. It will show you the names of the files. You can keep notes to self here in the private notes field that is never released. So you might want to remember particular things about this experience that you wouldn't share with others that can go in here. Then you save. It will tell you that it's saved successfully. OK. And now I can see my new experiences in the menu box and I can come back now and use that and include it in an ePortfolio view if I wish. And I can also come back and I can edit it. I might decide um, after my next classroom prac or piece of work experience that I actually want to add a bit more um, evidence here. I might want to add some more files. I can always come back, highlight the experience I want to work on and edit and do some more work on it. So over time, each time you're adding an experience, this is the process you go through. It's a matter of choosing the folder that you want to put this particular reflection into, remembering that the folders help you to organise and manage your content and also provides this heading to your reader when they're reading this piece of evidence. I might be coming back and actually adding a bit more information to this experience that I've created earlier. I might have now some files that I want to, at to attach to it and that's fine. I can go through that process. I can make changes and updates to this experience as long as I save it. That will now be the updated version. And my experience is my collection of pieces of evidence about my learning build up as experiences 
by going through this particular process. And we'll have a look in the next video at how to add artefacts to our ePortfolios.